Hello everybody, I am Buck WSR Weezer and today our job is to install a new dishwasher. I'm going to show you how to do that. This is actually part two. In part one I showed you how to uninstall and remove the old dishwasher which we did here in our kitchen. Disconnecting the, the water line, the drain, and of course the electric. First things first, I got to read the instructions. Now we've got a brand new Bosch dishwasher, model number SHXM98W75N. And we're very excited about this dishwasher because it's supposed to be super quiet, clean your dishes in about an hour, and do a really good job. But I want to make sure I do a good job with this. So I'm going to pause the video while I take some time to read the installation instructions in all three languages. Sprechen Sie... Oh, that's, that's German. That's not in here. This is French, isn't it? Uh-huh. And Spanish. Instrucciones de instalación. I'm going to read this cover to cover because I really want to do this right. And so I'm going to pause the video. I'll study up. And then I'll come back and show you how we do it. Well, I'm done reading. I can't, I read the entire instruction manual. I got to admit it to you, the French was kind of tough. But I am so ready to go now. I had to run out to the hardware store to buy one of these elbows for connecting the water line. I also got a new water line because the other one was 15 to 20 years old. And I think sometimes. The, the rubber part inside the end of the hose can deteriorate over time, so I thought a new one was the way to go. And the first thing we're going to do is to work with the electric. Now, this particular dishwasher comes with its own electrical junction box, which they want you to mount, not in the area of where the dishwasher goes, but in the adjacent cabinet. So we're going to uh, we're going to connect the uh, camera onto the tripod, and we will get started in moving and connecting the uh, the wiring. So anyway, this this junction box has its own plug. This will plug into the back of the dishwasher, and then the uh, the 12 2 Romex that feeds the electric to the dishwasher will get connected here. It's got a cover on this box, and I was going to take it off and check out the inside. I don't think we make connections with wire nuts under here. I think it's uh, the hot, the neutral, and the ground go under some uh, terminals or lugs inside this box. So let's see what we can do here. Yeah, so it's pretty straightforward. When we bring in our 12-2 Romex, we just go by the colors. Black is your Lahat, your line. Your white in the middle is your neutral. Your green on this left is the ground. And they will go under these one, two, three lugs. So I'll get started on that. Alright, I'm going to drill a couple of pilot holes on the back wall of this sink cabinet. That's where we're going to mount the junction box. And the junction box is right here. You can see I made the connections at, at the top. Now we're going to replace the cover with the four Phillips head screws. And then we shall secure it to the back wall of the cabinet. It did not come with screws to secure it to the back wall of the cabinet, but I've got a few here that we'll be able to use. Okay, so let's mount this thing. I hope you'll be able to see what I'm doing. Okay. 
There's one. How's the back of my head look? And there's two. Okay. Is that it? So then at the other end of this junction box is this plug here that's going to go into the uh, back of the dishwasher. I want to feed it through this hole. Mm, you can't see that hole. There it is. And that part is done. The electric is ready. Let's move on and hook up some of the plumbing. It's a peanut butter. While we work on the dishwasher, I, I made the sink temporarily out of commission and I put a sign that I hoped would communicate that message clearly to the other members of my family. So far, so good. All right, we have the dishwasher on its sort of laying on its front. I got a pillow under it there. And I'm not gonna lie to you, I had a little problem here off camera. This is a, a worm gear drive that connects a rod through the front to a slot a screw slot on the front so that you can raise or lower the back from the front. So while I was playing with it, it was kind of stuck. Next thing I know, this worm gear on the rod popped out of this little hole and I had a hard time getting it back in. That's why this is all open. It disconnected the wire off of here, pulled this drain out of place. So what I think I'm gonna do is, it lowers pretty well, so I'm gonna put it in a high position, put my feet in a high high position, and then I will lower them if it's too high. It's easier to lower it than it is to raise it. So let me put this section back together and then we'll start talking about hooking up the water line. Our next step is to take this 90 degree elbow. It has a rubber washer in there and we're going to connect it here on this water inlet. The instructions say not to not to tighten it excessively. After all, it doesn't need to be that tight and we're going into a plastic connector, so we don't want to go nuts on it. I am going to use channel locks on this, not because I want to tighten it much, because I don't. It's just really hard to get my fingers in there to do what needs to be done here. Alright, and you know what I will do, I will, once I have the water line connected, I will turn the water on before I secure the dishwasher to the cabinet. Here's our new line. Feed it through this loop, just like the drain line is, over to here, and we connect it. Again, it doesn't need to be super tight. I am going to use the 5 8 wrench just a little bit because I like, it's hard to do with your fingers, and I want to make sure it's snug. You don't have to do it very hard. All right, so our our uh, water line is now connected, and we are ready to set up the unit and move it into the into position in the cabinet. So let's do that next. Well, we're about to push this dishwasher into the opening. I want to show you one other thing I did. I took some of this. Uh, this foil tape and I taped some of these edges because I want the uh, I want this insulation to stay down I don't want any vibration and I'm just kind of going the extra mile to make sure this stays intact and stays in place certainly that's an optional but I tend to be kind of obsessive all right now before we put it back into place we're gonna have to connect 
the power cord through here. And you might be able to see in there, it plugs in right here. And the idea is to push that in until it clicks into place. All right, because you don't want that coming out. All right, that's good. Now, these are the, the water line and the uh, drain line. And as we push it back in place, I gotta feed them through that hole right there into the sink cabinet. Drain hose, water line, and as I push the and as, as I push the unit into place, I'm going to pull out any extra slack that's back there. We'll see how we can do this. everything fine I have enough hose to hook up there I should have plenty of drain line to hook up there and now it's just a matter of getting the dishwasher positioned where it should go okay yeah that looks pretty good right there And in here, our next step will be to make our connections. I'll start here with the water line. All right, and you don't have to make it tight. I do like to put a, a wrench on it just a little bit to make it a little more than hand tight because the fingers aren't as strong as they used to be. But it doesn't have to be super tight. turn the water on and uh, listen and make sure we're not hearing any water dripping anywhere water is on it's now supplied to the machine full on I don't hear any water dripping hissing all that's good all right, we're going to attach the drain hose. I'm going to use the same uh, clamp that I previously used on the other. It's still in good shape. And then we will get a screwdriver and tighten that down right there. But, there's still more to do here with this drain line. This would probably be all right, but this drain has to loop at least 20 inches above the floor of the base of the cabinet. Which for us is almost right where it is. But they provide you with this little bracket that you can attach to the with screws to the back of the cabinet clip the hose into here and uh, 
make sure that you are high enough. All right, I've secured the bracket that they provide and I cut it down for my situation. I've secured it with two screws to the back of the cabinet. And I actually drilled a couple of holes on either side to put these zip ties so that it will keep the hose in there. It was tending to pop out just a little too easily. How's the back of my head looking? All right. All right. That's better. All right. So there. Drain line's hooked up. Okay, there's one thing I forgot to do before pushing this unit all the way back in, and that is to attach these uh, clips that's with which we will secure the uh, dishwasher to the counter from underneath. So they give you these brackets, two of them. They fit in here. And then they suggest with a pair of pliers to squeeze it and bend down those tabs. I'm okay. Bend down these tabs so that they don't pull out. All right, same thing happens on this side. in place. I don't like that. Because that guy's supposed to be down in there further. Maybe I can bang him down in with a nail and with a punch and a hammer. Okay, I think that's better. Okay. That part's ready now we're ready to fully slide it in under all right now the last thing is to secure this to the cabinet through through the screws and through those brackets with but I need to first make sure it opens smoothly because see the re reality is here at the corner um, you, we don't want it to open and then the door to bang into these uh, uh, cabinets or the knobs. We've had that trouble in the past. So the truth is I'm putting it in kind of straight but at a slight angle so that when we open the door it gets good clearance and doesn't bang into the cabinets on the left hand side. So I like it where it is right now. So with the door open the idea is to screw up through the bottom through these brackets that we have already put in place into the wood of the ca countertop. So I'm going to try to do that right now. Should have drilled pilot holes. It's not going in at all. Try a small one. This one's pointier. Maybe it'll start easier. Oh, I like that. You went right in. Let's go to the other side. That's all it takes. Those two little nubby, those two little nubby guys. Because when you have the dishwasher filled with dishes and you pull the, the racks out, it's going to become very heavy, and you've got to have this secured to the countertop so the machine doesn't fall out of the wall. 
Okay, we're gonna install this insulation that goes to the base and then the kick plate. This will be hard to see what I'm doing. I've got a flashlight here. Hopefully that'll help. There's a little bit of space here. And that is where we're putting this guy. Right up in there. A little insulation. That's great. All right. That's it. Putting on that base plate was a challenge only because you have to do it lying completely on your belly. That was the hard part. All right, there it is. It's all installed, ready to go. All right, so let's step back, open and close the door, and see what it's like. Go. All right, that feels pretty good. The machine feels secure in the opening. Opens and closes well. Now, if only we could find some dirty dishes to try this <laughs> thing out with. I'm Buck WSR Weezer. That's how you install a dishwasher. Thanks for watching and have a great day.